Good evening, all. I Rapstein with your financial market wrap up, and this wrap up is for Tuesday, the 21st of June, 2021, as we sit here now at 7 p.m. Central Time. So a strong day in the stock market. We came back to a nice short covering rally, maybe some new buying, but I thought it was mostly short covering. And tonight you're giving up a little, but come on, you, you had a monster rally in these markets and they can afford to give up a little bit here and there. You don't put on these hundreds of points and not give something up. On the energy market, it's sort of back and forth right now. I'm watching that gas. Obviously, I've swung to the uh, August contract. In the grains, I'm at the Nove beans, the sep wheat, the deece corn. In uh, coffee, I'm September, cotton, December. So I'm making the switches. Bitcoin, down 200 tonight in the July contract. So we got to keep our eye and see what that is. A lot of people thinking, oh, the market's bottoming in that. I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. When we come to the S&P and you take an area chart of closes, let's face it. Here we are 7 o'clock on Tuesday night and we're up for the week, 2.7%. We had a nice rally. And when you take a look at the market, you see how that rally lifted it up. But it, did it change anything on the chart? I hate to tell you this, no. You've still got the pattern of lower highs, lower lows. You have to get through this high. Now, let me just see if I can carry that over and give you an idea as I practice with my new toy here. And here we go. You'd have to take out 38,043 in order for this market to tell me at least that it wants to negate this leg of the downside. Without that, I'm not at that point in time. When I take a look at moving averages, they're far away, all the way up here. So there's nothing here that's supporting the market at this point. It's the Bollinger Band that's been offering the support. Each time you fall to it, that's it. Now remember, the Bollinger Band is an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within it 95% of the time. Therefore, by its own definition, on rallies it's a resistance point and on breaks a support point. What you do is you have to learn to marry momentum with it. And once you marry those two, you get a powerful signal. Now what I'm looking to see is does this market want to go sideways and keep these numbers under 20 for several days in a row? Tomorrow tells me if that's the case. If you get through tomorrow on a down day, the odds favor you're going to do what I call in bed. You're going to have several days or more in a number of the indices where both numbers are under 20, which tells me that the market is ready to be sold on rallies. You heard me, sold on rallies come Thursday. We've got to get through tomorrow. You're at your most oversold part of the market right now. So that's one way to look at it. In the NASDAQ, it's not the same. You cannot embed. You're just oversold in a downtrend. The support zone has been hit and the market stalled on that. That does not mean it's bullish. It's not. Let's assume it wants to rally here and it gets up through these highs. So what? Your resistance is going to be 12,104. And on the weekly chart, you won't have changed a thing. In the Dow, we might embed. Again, if, if we come here together and we take a look at this, both numbers settled under 20 today, both under 20 on Friday, not the day before, not on Thursday. So today being Thursday, I'm sorry, Wednesday, if both settle under 20, I get that embedded reading. Do you see what I'm getting at? Important to study that. So what do I do when that's occurring? I tell my clients to sit back, wait and see if that develops, because if it is, it's all systems go. The momentum will tell you where to come out of the market. I write about it, I teach it, it's all in my subscriber videos, and I'll be looking for another test of lows. In the Russell, it's more or less not trying to embed yet. You've got to get a few more days in this one. But trend down, the most you can do on a rally is negate the downtrend. Now, one of the stock indices is in a pattern where it says, okay, I'm getting bullish and we should do something about that. In the VIX, what stopped the rally was the upper Bollinger Band. I did my best with my broken voice to explain that to people, and that's all that it did. The trend is up. The support is back here at 27.80, but you don't want to see the market under 27.76. Do I think the pros will nibble down there? 
I do for four cents. I think they'll say, okay, if it holds and I don't get stopped out, maybe I'm going back to that 3411. I think they'll be doing that. In the SEP 30 year bond, you can see how the market lost its downside momentum. The red line popped back over 20. That often culminates with price in the 18 day average making a run at each other. However, the fact that this is taking so long means it's gonna be a feeble run. More or less what I'm saying is, it's nice to get bear market rallies along the way, but this market I don't think is through on the downside. I would not be surprised to see new lows come about. As the Fed gears up, it's only the 21st of June. We have to get into July for the next 75 basis point hike. But remember, Fed Chair Powell speaks tomorrow in front of the Senate, and then on Thursday in front of the House committees. So he's going to be drilled, and you're going to hear a lot of talk about that. Uh, I think Mr. Evans from Chicago also speaks, not in front of Congress, but speaks tomorrow afternoon as well. You lost the embedded reading here in the notes. When I see that, what it tells me is the downside momentum is gone. That does not mean it's lost. It's gone right now. And the market's going to drift or try to rally to get back to the resistance point. If it doesn't, I wait for it to work out of the overbought, uh, uh, oversold condition. Got to get both numbers away from being under 30, and then I take a fresh look at the short side if everything's there. In the dollar index, I don't like the pattern. What you have is a pattern of higher lows, but lower highs. That's not a trend. The bias is up since you're over the 18-day average, and momentum's trying to drift down a little bit. I'll let somebody else want to own that. You have the flip-flop in the euro. The euro has a pattern of lower highs, but higher lows. So it's drifting sideways as well. Wait for these to develop out of here and give you something better. In the British pound, you're still very much in the bear camp, but like the other two currencies, Lower highs, higher lows. I walk away from those, don't have to be involved. Then we get to the July Bitcoin. This is an embedded reading. So I think given a good rally overnight tomorrow, I think the pros are gonna sell short. And they'll look to see if the market can get back down. What's happened is the market was trading underneath the lower Bollinger Band. It moved to the right-hand side, and that's all that it's done. It hasn't even tried to rally. To negate the current downtrend, you've got to take out 22,970, but more important, you've got to get the red line back over 21. Barring that, a retest of 18,000 to me certainly looks very much in the cards at this point. When I look at the differential between Brent and WTI oil, well, you're staying over the 18-day average, which means Brent is stronger than the WTI. And look at how this market has pulled back into your lower Bollinger Bands. Voice gone and all, I said, this is no longer bullish. I was telling my subscribers, I was recording in the mornings with no voice, hitting the pause button, drinking water, go back and do my recording, and every 30 seconds to a minute, my voice would crack. You hear it cracking a little right now. It'll come back. The doctors told me each day it'll get stronger and stronger. Um, but that's what I was doing. And I was telling traders, I think you're coming down again. Now, they'll say, well, Ira, everything we hear is uh, supply is going to be short-lived. We know President Biden's running to the Saudis hat in hand, hoping they'll do something. They won't. Uh, their plan, by the way, for increased production comes to an end in August. So keep that in the back of your mind. I don't know if they'll release a new plan or what. It's a good thing the president's going there to discuss it with them. And we're not going to see U.S. production pick up very much. If you look at the amount of money the oil companies are allocating, I'm writing about it tonight. It'll be in tonight's market letter. You know more than you were in 2019. No. And with the recession... No, the demand's going to falter. Yes, we've lost Russian oil on the market to a degree. You know, Russian production is down, So, but who's getting it? China in India. They're buying everything they can from Russia that they're willing to produce. Now, all of a sudden, the Saudis, OPEC, has been replaced in China by Russia. So China has taken two very solid sources, Iran. They probably get Venezuela. 
<laughs> and Russia, okay? Outlier countries, but that, that's exactly where they're getting it from. India plays the game right down the middle, okay? They'll do whatever they want to do. This market, though, is oversold into a support zone is the point. Same thing in WTI. You don't want to be short anymore the way that I teach charting. Does it mean you can't drop further? That's not what I'm saying. There's a difference between wanting to be short and markets still bearish. It's a bear market. It's oversold. It's hit downside targets. Let the next guy carry the risk. I don't want it anymore. We then look at gasoline. Same thing. Once you hit the Bollinger Band, why be in it? Have you noticed so far, you don't hear anything about gasoline prices falling, gas buddy, nothing, yet you have gone in the futures from the 430s right down into the 364 level. You've dropped 60, 70 cents a gallon and not one word about it. Where's that savings coming? It's got to be here and it will be. In natural gas, look at how this market's come down. So natural gas has gotten annihilated, lost over $2. Since when? There's an event. Remember that explosion at Freeport. When that happened, the U.S. had to keep 16% of the natural gas that we exported. Out of that one port, 16% of all the gas we export became available for the U.S. market. This is in our own way with this crazy heat wave and all saved us. I looked at my gas bill come in today. It's not out of control. That was the saving factor. Otherwise, I'm convinced we'd be way up into the moon. Not the case. Unfortunately for Europe, that is not going to be their saving grace. They still have an awful big problem with that market, and it's something that they're going to have to uh, just come in and live with. But that's, that's how it goes. Let me get over here if I could for you. There we go. You know, each morning, I love it when I start off. And I, I get up at 3.34 in the morning. I start reading. Get out of bed do my things. And by 5.30, I'm recording for my subscribers. You don't see it here on the free YouTube. They see it. By 6.15, it's probably in their hands, 6.30 at the latest. Sometimes I record 5.40. It's right in that zone. Let the, I, I, first, I'm reading all about Asia and Europe, and I give the headlines as to what's going on there, if anything's important. But then the U.S. reports, like all the U.S. reports typically, typically come out between 6 in the morning and 9. Some come out 5 in the morning, but it's typically 6 o'clock in that central time. So I go in, and now I'm saying, buy here, sell there, do this, here's your stop, here's the reason. But it's a full video as to why. It's not just me talking. I've got my cursor. I'm moving the chart back and forth. I'm bringing you to the weekly charts, the daily charts, giving you a whole picture. Do you have to take it? No. The idea there is if you have your own ideas, Maybe I can help you build on those ideas, and with those ideas, all of a sudden what's going on is you've got a game plan. The other thing that it fits in with, I know a lot of you trade the ETFs. Well, you and I both know IWM, DIA, SPY, QQQ, TLT, BND, I can go with the parade, FXE, UUP. They're all based on futures contracts. Not everyone, you know that but a lot. So that fits right in, and then I get you into the spider ETF and stocks. So I try to cover oh, anywhere from five to seven stocks at a time. I just am changing now to Chewy for one of the, uh, the events that I'm doing on it. So I'll rotate back and forth. You might want to take a look at this. You're not forced to buy a one-year subscription in any manner. You can give it a try. Hey, this makes sense. You're going to get in the combo package like this. 48 videos in a 30-day period, each 15 to 20 minutes long, but they have a scroll bar on the bottom. So on the bottom, you're able to scroll and go to the area that you want and just hang right in there. How do you do this? Go to www.irapstein.com under the word research or just follow me. Take your cursor, push it up here. You'll see an icon. Click, take you right into it. I'm Ira. You have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.